What's up everyone, Clayton here, and today I'm here with a top 5. It's a top 5 one-handed swords. Uh, these are like unique weapons, they're not going to be like uh, craftable uh, weapons or one-hand weapons. And it kind of goes between like my opinion and, you know, the stats. So if you think something's better than something else, then, well, that's your opinion. But these are my opinion, uh, the best one-handed weapons. So yeah, let's get into it. So the first one I have is Murex Sword. Uh, Murex Sword is, can be found at the end of the Dragonborn DLC uh, after the quest uh, at the Summit of Apocrypha. So this weapon has the most damage, uh, base damage of any other one-handed sword. Uh, as you can see on the screen, you can see kind of the level bracket. So like 1 through 44 has 12 damage, 45 through 59 has 14 damage, and 60 plus has 16 damage. What that means is when you find it in between those levels, that's what the base damage is going to be at. So if you find it later on, your base damage will be higher. Anyways, the enchantment for this is absorbed 15 points of stamina, and no matter what level bracket you find it at, it's going to be at 15 points. As well as for the upgrade material, which means what you'll need to use to upgrade it, is a ebony ingot and a daedra heart. And uh, this perk, if you do the smithing perks to be able to improve it twice, uh, you can use the Dwarven Smithing perk and uh, that'll make it upgrade twice but you have to have the also have the blacksmith arcane blacksmith perk because it will make it uh, times to uh, increase upgrade so yeah this is the highest damage of any of the swords uh, base damage anyways and it's really cool it has really like, cool aesthetics it's usually not that like people only like this sword uh, I don't really like it either, but I just kind of like it for the aesthetics, and it looks really cool. So yeah, number four. Uh, number four is kind of a cop-out because I put two together. And the reason I do that is because uh, Soul Render and Blood Scythe are only useful when you use them together. And I'm just kind of making an exception for that just because I said so. Anyways, for these weapons, it doesn't matter what level you find it, the base damage is going to be 13 apiece. And to find these, you need to... Uh, kill the legendary pirate king Hawknear Deathbrand. Uh, this is part of another D Dragonborn DLC, so you have to be on Soul Sun to do this. And uh, once you hit level 36, you can start the Deathbrand uh, quest, and that's how you do it. You just kind of follow that quest until you go to Grilda Hall Barrow on Soul Stein and get the weapons. So, anyways, like I said, Soul Render and Blood Scythe have a base damage of 13, and for Soul Render, the uh, you know, the enchantment is, when wielded with Blood Scythe, absorbs 15 magicka and has a chance to lower target, target's magic defense. Which is pretty good to lower, like, uh, I guess if you're using a cloak or something, you can, uh, uh, like, lower their magic defenses and, you know, increase your magic damage. For Blood Scythe, the enchantment's kind of the same, but with a little twist. Instead of absorbing 15 health, it absor or instead of absorbing 15 magicka, it absorbs 15 health and has a chance to lower our armor defenses, so he kind of gets both uh, realms of magicka and uh, health damage. And for these, uh, the upgrade material is ebony ingots, and the perk that you'll need is daedric smithing uh, to be able to increase it twice. And for most of all of these uh, swords, you'll need the blacksmithing, or arcane blacksmith perk to be able to upgrade them uh, higher. So, number three is Nightingale Blade. Uh, Nightingale Blade is a blade that Carlia gives to you uh, after you, you uh, complete the Thieves Guild quest hard answer. So you'll need to use, uh, you need to be in Thieves Guild. For this one, the level and the enchantment increase per level bracket. So what I mean is, for the first level bracket, which is 1 to 18, the base damage is 10 and absorbs 5 health. So every level bracket above that, it gains 1 health, or 1 damage, and five points of your enchantment. So let's say the 27 to 35 bracket will absorb 15 po points of health and stamina and be a base damage of 12. So the later on in the game you find it, the higher the enchantment will be and the base damage, which is very important if you want to make a, uh, a character a s a focus around a weapon. You might want to wait later on into the build or your playthrough to get it so it's a little bit better. But, you know, that's just my opinion. So anyways, the reason it's number 3 and not higher, because the enchantment is amazing. There is no upgrade smithing perk. 
which means it doesn't benefit from any smithing perk. So you can't uh, improve it past like it's a, you can't double the uh, improvement like most other weapons. That's kind of limits the weapon a little bit because you can't really like make it super high damage. So the enchantment's really good, but you can't really use a lot of damage. So that's why it's only number three. And for the upgrade material is the Embity Ingot. And uh, I really like this weapon. I wanted this, like, this is going to be, like, my number one or two, but I didn't even know that you can't have a perk to upgrade it times two. So, you know, it's really important if you, excuse me. So number two is Dragon Bane. Uh, Dragon Bane is a sword you get during the main quest line. Um, pretty much after you uh, go to Sky Haven, Haven Temple, there's going to be, like, a little room off to the left, right when you walk up the stairs, and there is where Dragon Bane will be, and it is a katana looking weapon. It looks really cool. I think this sword type is like the best uh, aesthetic look of any other sword, and I really like this. So whenever I can get my hands on a sword like this, I'm really pumped. So anyways, the damage is the same, or not the same, I mean I think it is the same, but the damage brackets and the enchantment level brackets are the same uh, type as the Nightingale Blade. What I mean by that it's for the enchantment, it does 20 points of extra damage to dragons, 10 points of shock damage. And that's the 1 through 18 bracket. So each level bracket above that, it gains 5 more points, up to a cap of 40 damage to dragons, and 10 points of shock. So it only does the points for dragons, not the shock. So they're kind of confusing. If you guys want more information on all these, I'm getting all my information from the Elder Scrolls Wiki page. And you can just put in your weapon you want to use and you can figure it out there. So this is kind of a more thing. If you want more damage towards dragons, you want to wait higher in levels uh, to be able to pick it up so it uh, does more damage. And this one, to upgrade it, you'll need quick silver ingots, and for the perk, you'll need steel smithing. Uh, and I really like this uh, sword because of the aesthetics, and I really enjoy it. But it's not the number one. But the number one is Chilren. Uh, Chilren is a glass sword, that is really, really good. I enjoy it a lot. And I use it, like, on most of my, like, a lot of my playthroughs. And Chilren is a, uh, sword that you get through the Seeds Guild line. Um, after, like, there's a quest where you go into Mercer Frey's, uh, home in Riften called the Pursuit. And at the end, he has, like, a little trophy room past all of his traps. And it is in a sealed case that you have to lockpick. And this, inch this sword is sort of like the other weapons that have a damage bracket as well as an enchantment um, increase per level. And for this, the enchantment is, uh, for the base, is takes, or target takes 5 points of frost damage to health and stamina and has a chance to paralyze the target for 2 seconds. That is the big one. That is the best like enchantment rather. Paralyze is one of the best enchantments ever and I really like Paralyze because it really gets you out of some sticky situations. So the 5 points of damage, frost damage, increases per level bracket uh, by 5 points capping at 30. Uh, this sword has the second highest damage uh, after Mirax sword. So this is the strongest sword and probably the strongest enchantment. That's kind of where Mirax sword falls short short is that it doesn't really have the best enchantment but this one has really good enchantment i really like it so this sword to be able to upgrade you'll need the refined malachite ore and the glass smithing perk will increase at times two which is kind of obvious since it's a glass sword and this is the number one this is my favorite unique sword in skyrim and you might not think it's the best but i think it's the best and it looks the coolest because it has got a blue shade to it uh, that's not like regular glass armor or glass weapons. So I think it's really cool and it is my number one So if you guys uh, Like this video, please leave a like and you know, show your support that you guys want to see more of these And if you guys want to leave a comment down below on what you guys want to see next for the top five and Skyrim Whether that be like two-handed uh, I mean two-handed swords. I'm just going individual like if you want one-handed axes and you know, I'll do that next You know I just kind of want to break it down so there can be multitude of videos because my Skyrim builds, I haven't had one out for like a month and it's taken me a lot of time. I want to be able to get, you know, three or four done so I can have like three or four weeks 
where I give you guys a build. So that's what I'm trying to do. I know it's taking a long time, but these take a lot of hours. If you ever play through Skyrim, I'm not using it on PC, so it takes a lot of hours. There's no cheats, and I just have to grind through all the hours. So I hope you guys understand that and aren't too mad with me since I haven't actually had uh, a video or a build out for a long time. But yeah, I want to thank you guys for watching. And if you guys like this, like I said, you know, leave a like and comment what you guys want to see next. So thank you, and uh, this is Clayton, signing off.